Hey guys, welcome back to another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be starting work on the Wildspire Waste box for the Monster Hunter World, the board game game. God, that's a mouthful. I recently finished the Ancient Forest box and moving on to the Wildspire Waste box actually offered quite a lot of variety, but some different challenges as well. So today we're starting with the Baroth model, which is in-game quite a sort of dull and muted monster. It's, it's lots of browns, look like grey browns, very muted, not very colourful. So instead of using the in-game colour palette, I decided to look at some of the concept art and go with something like that. Now it still looks like Baroth, it's still very similar, it's just a little bit more colourful with a bit more variety. So I started off by just applying a cream to all of his underside, to so his belly, his underarms, back of his legs, things like that. And then I went in with a very orangey brown for all of the scales. And I'm spraying this from one direction, so from the front to the back, to hopefully leave those recesses a little bit darker to help with the shading a little bit later on. But I'm applying this all over. Now it looks very orange at the moment. Don't worry, we're gonna fix that up later on and apply a bit of a darker brown over the top. But I wanted to get this brighter orangey brown in first, just to add that nice bit of color to the model. Now to emphasize this even more, I'm applying a orange glaze over the top of this. All the paints that I'm using, by the way, are from the Two Thin Coats paint range. Um, there's a link down below if you want to check them out. Not affiliated, just highly recommend these paints is what I've been using for a long time now. Now to start turning down the orange so that it's not just a bright orange uh, fire truck, I've decided to dry brush on, and this is a sort of a, a gray brown that I'm applying over the top. And I applied this for a while and then decided that it wasn't quite dark enough. It wasn't quite what I wanted. Um, so I carried on and applied this all over because I thought it'd make a nice transition. I've a bit of this in as well as some of the darker brown, which you can see me applying now. This is more like it's a, a dark bark color brown. Again, I'm dry brushing from the front to the back to leave those oranges and actually decided to leave the orange in the recesses rather than having it darker in the recesses and then orange on the tips. Decided to have the orange in the recess and then the darker brown on the tips because then it looks like the mud is building up where it can get, but it's not quite run down into all those gaps yet and you can see the color of the Baroth down underneath. I then started to apply all the little details, adding red around his I don't know what these are supposed to be, some sort of funnels or trumpets, I don't know. It sounds like a train when he charges at you, so it might be a train horn. Um, on his claws, on his toes, just adding all those little details in. And then I decided to try and push the orange back up just a little bit. So I went back in with an orange glaze, focusing more on those recessed areas, but applying it all over as a thin glaze, just to sort of give it that bit of pop. So it's more of an orangey brown again, rather than just plain brown. It looks a mess while it's on wet, but when it dries, it looks fine. I then applied a brown wash to all of the cream areas that were painted earlier on and sort of blended that in with the orange so there was a bit of a transition between the two and it wasn't just a stark contrast. This is one color and this is another. And then once I'd done that, I went back and finished all the rest of the details, like the teeth, the eyes, and then get ready to start on the base. Now I actually had quite a lot of fun with all the bases in this box, doing something a little bit different than I did with the Ancient Forest box. For this one, I tried putting mud down in the middle and then adding a sort of cracked texture paste to the sides to show that cracked earth that I was then going to colour. However, it didn't stick to the base, it flaked off. I've used this a few times and never really managed to get it to work. I think I need to look up some YouTube videos on how that works. So I went back to my tried and tested method of mud in the middle, although I did paint this a little bit to brighten it up. And then base ready, base and glue from Geek Gaming Scenics and some desert sand and stone for the top layer. And I then went in and added a little bit of arid earth. So I sprinkled a little bit over the top of the desert sand and stone and a little bit into the middle just to blend those two together. And once I'd got all the basic material down that I wanted, I went in with a pipette and some uh, Geek Gaming Scenics sealant uh, just to apply that on. I always put this over the top of anything that I'm doing on the bases because it dries rock solid and means that it's never gonna flake off or, or crumble off. I added a couple of tufts just to the edge and then decided because this is Baroth, he's supposed to be a bit of a muddy boy, I added some UV resin onto the base, just sort of put a couple of blobs on, spread it out a bit and then dried it with a UV torch just to try and make it look like muddy puddles. Having a go at doing this on this model actually inspired me on one of the models later on, but you'll see more about that when we get to that tutorial. For now, Baroth is finished and I had a hell of a lot of fun painting him and I'm looking forward to showing you what I did with the rest of the box. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. And until then, enjoy your hobby.